Welcome everybody and today I'm going to explain why carbon filters are the odor control solution in almost any grow room setup and why other technology has a real hard time competing with them. This will be the first of maybe like a three part series on carbon filters because I've talked about them briefly only twice in about seven years so I figured it was time to do a bit of an update. We'll touch on every aspect, including how to size them, where to hang them, how to make them last longer, maintain pre-filters and so forth, but to start today I'll just briefly go over how they work, how long they should last, and why you probably shouldn't need anything else for odor control in your grow room if you're like 95% of small to medium scale growers. And today's episode is brought to you guys by TNB Naturals, makers of natural gardening products like this non-caustic powder form pH up and down. I've actually been using this in my grow journal recently and I've taken notice that it's powerful and one of these bags lasts forever. So check them out down in the video description for sure. Okay, so this right here is a carbon filter. They're usually categorized by the diameter of their duct opening right here. Four, six, and eight inches are the most common sizes, but they do go higher. This right here is a six inch. You attach them to your grow room exhaust duct and hang them inside your grow area so that the smelly air has to go through the filter before getting to the exhaust fan and then get exhausted out of the grow space. And yes, these are designed to pull air through this outer filter inwards and have it go this way, not to push air out this way and through, which is why they should be hung inside the room, not on the out end of the exhaust. Lots of people make that mistake. But for most personal grows in residential settings and even in some commercial facilities, you do need to utilize an odor control system in order for the dank smells during flowering phase not to bug your immediate neighbors. Now what these actually are are largely hollow metal cylinders filled with activated carbon granules. Most of the time the carbon is just a crushed charcoal like it is inside this guy. You can hear it if I shake it. There, you can kind of hear that. More expensive carbon is actually made from coconuts and is called cocoa carbon. It's harder and it lasts longer than charcoal based carbon. But anyway, the carbon, whatever it's made from, has a very porous structure with a ton of surface area as a result. A single gram of activated carbon can have hundreds or even way over a thousand square meters of surface area, which gives you some idea of how this can trap so much odor for so long. The carbon in these is activated, as I've said, which is done either chemically or with hot steam and pressure, and it opens up all of the charcoal's pores. It also gets charged with positive ions that attract negative ions aka odors and pollutants. As air moves through the filter, a process called adsorption takes place and the particles of the odors are pulled from the air and stick to the surface of the charcoal pores, forming a thin film coating which slowly drops off the positive charge of the charcoal, eventually draining it down and rendering the filter depleted, at which point it's easiest and cheapest to throw it out and replace it, or if you're resourceful you can have the carbon recharged back to a positive charge. And that's how they work in a nutshell. A well-maintained filter used correctly without overly high humidity in the room, more on that in Carbon Filters 102, should last for a year of 24-7 use. A 6-inch filter like this fellow, which is adequate for most personal grow space sizes, like, you know, 4x4 four four and 5x5 five five tents, this costs between 70 and 140 US dollars. So they're really not expensive, and of course, I'll link to some carbon filters that I like in the video description as well. Which brings me to the argument of why is it that carbon filters are the best technology for odor control bar none, and why a clean majority of growers choose them. They are cheap and efficient. If you go into the odor control section of an indoor gardening store, you will find an assortment of atmosphere altering devices. First, you'll see carbon filters in various forms, including these cylindrical ones, 
or inline duct ones, which you find more often in commercial setups. But also ozone generators, HEPA duct filters, both mobile and stationary, and even some plug-in oil-based odor neutralizers. While some of the particulate style filters like the HEPA inducts can make sense in bigger grow rooms despite the higher initial cost of the unit since you only replace the fibrous filter in them, not the whole unit every time, a smaller scale grower will quickly notice some, shall we say, efficiency issues with any non-carbon filter option. See, the wonderful thing about a carbon filter is that it lasts a long time, it's cheap to replace when it gets used up, and quite importantly, it utilizes your existing exhaust fan, so it requires no additional power to run in a space. These three points combined make it terribly tough for most other options to compete. Case in point, this unit right here, which arrived in my mailbox the other day. The company that sent this thing to me uses it as an odor control and allergen removal product for different spaces that are a few hundred square feet. This is basically a HEPA-style mobile uh, air filter, see? You can see the filters in there, and then at the base of it, it actually has its own little 4-inch fan and a fan speed adjuster knob. And while this unit is quiet and it's efficient and it gets the odor control job done, when I ran the numbers on what this costs to run because of its expensive filters, high initial cost and dedicated fan, this little fellow works out to be roughly 10 times more expensive than a carbon filter just within its first year. And it only falls behind further the longer you use it. So as nifty and efficient as something like this looks, Looks, don't think that it's going to be the carbon filter in terms of cost and for that matter the performance won't be uh, noticeably different as long as you size your filter correctly to the room. So there you go, carbon filters. They work and they're cheap and that's why they're a grower staple. Again, I'll link to some below and make sure you're subscribed and hit that like button if this was useful. We'll see you in the next episode where we'll be uh, talking about getting the most lifespan out of your carbon filter. See you next time.